Palestinian Jerusalemites, who are the, the inhabitants, original inhabitants of the city, are being subject to ethnic cleansing policies conducted by the State of Israel. Jerusalem has been suffocated economically. There is a wall around Jerusalem that detaches it from its natural extension, which is the rest of the West Bank. Economically, this has severe effect on, on Jerusalem. If we look at education, in Jerusalem today, we need 1,000 classrooms. With the suffocation of the economy and uh, the lack of education, uh, social uh, issues rise up in terms of turning a blind eye on thieves, turning a blind eye on drug dealers, and at the same time not establishing uh, centers that would strengthen the uh, uh, social uh, uh, mesh. Um, and, and then you, we talk about cultural issues. Israel has been targeting the uh, uh, normal or natural uh, Arab, Palestinian, Islamic, Christian identity of the city. Since the abduction of uh, uh, the teenager Muhammad Abu Khadir and having him burnt alive by settlers who are the product of the same ideology of the people that govern the state of Israel today, uh, Jerusalem has witnessed uh, an exceptionally rise in protests that have been faced by flat-out brutality. During that time, we had 16 Palestinians, since then, 16 Palestinians were killed by Israelis since that day. We've had more than 900 uh, East Jerusalemites being injured by the Israeli forces. We had over 1,100 arrests uh, made. There have been cases of deportation. And actually, the rate of, there was a rise in home demolitions at the same time, rise in giving out tickets, fines, roadblocks, uh, and, and, and basically providing services. This has uh, an, another effect, which is uh, it fuels anger. And I believe... Uh, uh, Netanyahu wants to drag us as Palestinians from the peaceful protests that we are conducting now in Jerusalem into violence. This is what Netanyahu wants because he has elections coming up. And he wants us as Palestinians to go the violent route in order for him to achieve more uh, votes. Something that we will not give it to him. This is a decision made by Fatah. We'll stick to nonviolence. We will continue with our uprising in Jerusalem. We will continue with nonviolent resistance in the rest of the West Bank and including, of course, Jerusalem. So we will, not, we will expose the brutality of occupation. We will expose the illegality of the occupation. We will expose supporters of the occupation. And we will not give occupation or the right wing uh, in, in, that, that governs Israel uh, a chance to invest in our resistance for their own benefit. Nonviolence is our strategy. And our strategy in Jerusalem is divided basically into four streams. The first stream is to mobilize uh, the population through nonviolence activities. Uh, the second stream is to uh, spread awareness through media, not only to the Palestinians or Arabs or Muslims, or Europeans or Americans or the world, but also to the Israelis because there are so many crimes committed in their name against their neighbors. Third, it's through uh, uh, courts and the law. Even though we understand that the court system uh, in the state of Israel was designed to enforce the policies of the state of Israel, which is ethnic cleansing and so forth, but there are some loopholes that we do take advantage of. These loopholes don't resolve our problems, but they buy us time. And the fourth thing is, uh, stream is through public diplomacy. This public diplomacy w would transfer the knowledge also uh, and the experience. We invite people to come in and, and see what we do. And we also do it with the Israelis. And if you go to any of the protests or many of the protests, the small segment that is left of the Israeli left is still active and participate. But so far, they haven't been successful in convincing their own people 
of our cause because our cause is humanitarian as much as it is national. So it's open for the whole world to uh, struggle for it. Well, the Palestinian Authority uh, is not authorized by the, uh, um, by the Oslo Agreement to operate in occupied East Jerusalem. So directly. Indirectly, yes, they do. But, and this causes the, the, the true impression that the Palestinian National Authority is not doing enough for Jerusalem. But at the same time, being realis realistic, Israel's budget, Israel that owns, that controls Jerusalem, has the police force, has soldiers, has the law, has, controls occupied East Jerusalem, pours more money into uh, 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 illegal settlement activity and Judaization of occupied East Jerusalem, more money than the whole budget of the Palestinian National Authority. So there is no match. There is no match. The, the only offset of this balance is to take it out of its economic and even security context and, and push resistance, nonviolent resistance into it. This will offset this balance. In Jerusalem, the, um, uh, the relations with Hamas is affected by uh, what goes around us. I mean, Jerusalem case is not isolated. But there are two different camps. We have the national camp, which is uh, Fatah and the, 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 uh, the Palestinian left in general. And on the other side, we have the Islamic movement, which is basically Hamas and a little tiny bit of Islamic Jihad. Hamas has a different agenda than ours. Hamas's agenda is not an, of nationalism in nature. It's not about Palestine. It's about a much larger project. We go national, they go with the Muslim Brotherhood into other uh, projects. We also disagree on their insistence to use violence when it is not politically or even morally accepted. Uh, Choosing the timing, the methods, is something that we disagree with Hamas. If, if we achieve our goals on the international level in terms of gaining recognition, uh, not only at the level of the United Nations, but also in terms of individual states, this is a moral victory for all the people around the world that do not accept the injustice that is happening in, in Palestine. I believe that our fight to gain a UN resolution by Security Council to end occupation in two years, uh, this would help us to pressure the Israeli people to elect uh, rationally leaders that would uh, uh, work with us on a peace settlement as partners, not as masters and slaves like Netanyahu is doing right now. And uh, this arrogance uh, is, is being felt by the world. And I, I think it's time for the world, because this arrogance might be annoying to the world, but we as Palestinians, we pay our blood, our economy, our future as a price of this arrogance, this criminal mentality, this fascism and racism that is embedded in, in this government had led by uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. We went to the ICC, we will be members uh, first of uh, April, and we will sue the State of Israel, individuals in the State of Israel, our individual people, they can go and sue uh, the leaders of Israel, individuals in, in Israel, because simply there is no justice system here in this part of the world. Nothing rules us, uh, there are no laws. It's, the, it's, it's whoever is more powerful kills uh, the victim, and that's it, end of story. Nobody asks questions, especially when the leader of the free world, the United States, has been acting as a guard to criminal Israel. If the two-state solution doesn't work, we're going for one state for all, not a binational state. One state for all, one vote per citizen, and then we'll see who's going to win at the end, because it's it only in nature of human beings. We don't accept injustices, we do not cope with injustices, and we will fight at the end. And all racist regimes and fascist regimes will end by itself. They will eat themselves out. Simple as that.